Hey friends, Shane from HowToWrench.com, and we uh, I wanted to share with you tonight, uh, first off, a huge shout out to Dan Kyle over at Kyle Racing. Uh, got an unbelievable training session directly with him today, and uh, one thing, if, if you're familiar with the channel, you'll know I don't ever bullshit you on what I say I know or don't know or what I'm an expert on, what I'm not on, and suspension is not something that I'm an expert on. Uh, changing seals and rebuilding forks. Yeah. You know, doing OEM stuff, no problem. But part of my little gift to me for the weight loss challenge, uh, for the spike was I bought from Dan over there and he does not sponsor the channel, by the way, there was no, uh, paid money or anything, uh, like that. I'm just giving a shout out to a company that I thought did a killer job, um, doing customer service. I mean, out of this world today, I'm, I'm still a little blown away by it, to tell you the truth, but, um, back, back to buying this stuff from them. My friend, uh, Wendy and her friend Bobby were, uh, in the area to pick me up springs for my weight. Uh, cause she, she weighs a lot less than me, the gal I bought the bike from. And I just went crazy. I bought the latest generation, you know, Holy Grail, Olin Shock, the TTX. So I thought, why put that thing on there and not have it set up right? So we talked about sag, uh, you know, sag and, and rebound compression baselines and what you're doing and oil levels. And I mean, it was out of this world. I have pages of uh, notes from him today. So it is freaking awesome. So once again, Dan, thank you so much. But... Since I'm waiting for uh, the correct springs to get here, I'm going to, uh, tonight I decided I was going to go ahead and make these stands that I thought of. And I either saw a product or saw something thought, man, I really want that. But to get that rear shock off, normally I just put my forklift above the bike and use some tie downs and support it from like the subframe or whatnot. But probably from MotoGP race and stuff, you see them doing really cool stuff working in the, uh, working in the paddock. So I made these and they turned out fantastic. And, uh, I turned down a, a bar on the lathe. I still got to kind of clean it up. It's a little long on this side. You can see what I started with, but it's different diameters on the R6. So I turned that shaft down, uh, these stands, are actually from the camping or RV world. And I had a set, them old ones, that I picked up at a flea market. And I thought, man, I wish I had two more because I'm going to make front ones that go off the front mounts and cradle up under here so that I could take that stand off and do steering stem bearings and just do the work I want to do there. So pretty cool. But what they are, uh, I was able to get four pack of these. I can't believe it off Amazon for 40 bucks. They're this uh, Camco brand. They're meant for just stabilizing a uh, RV. They claim 6,000 pounds. They seem a little bit cheaper than I kind of expected for 6,000 pounds, but I'm not going to argue because uh, they're totally going to work for what I wanted to do. But when you buy them, you get all four and you get this. And everything was cool. I thought I already had the, the jack handle in there. So uh, this diameter happened to be a little bit smaller too. So what I did is I just went and got some different bar stock. Let me show you what I did. Because I think it's pretty cool. And you can see how that has that lipped edge on there. So I ground this down, put a couple flats on it, put it in there. Let's see, I'm on the stand, so actually I can show you. Show you this. This thing's freaking cool. So, pretty neat. So you can see I welded that on the bottom, but it still rotates. Uh, it's got the rivet, you know, in the middle in there, so it still rotates. So you just set that in like so, and then I get it, you know, close to where I want to be. And then I just did some square tubing. I notched it, welded it to a V. I was thinking this would be great to go around frame sliders or something. Not 100% sure. When I make this one, I'm actually not going to have it go around the frame slider. I don't know if the weight can be handled by just that bolt right there. So I'm going to go to a, a solid point on the frame. But I think this is freaking cool. But check this out. I'll get this set. Oops, wrong way. Get this set back up there. And look at that. Just kind of walks right in place. A little harder to do one-handed. But let me uh, square up the bottom here. And I'm just going to preload it just a little bit. Okay, she's good. But now, check out what I can do. Now, 
I can grab the rear stand, get it out of the way, and now I can service the shock. I can change out that shock. You know, I obviously can inspect the swing arm, make sure that it's good and moving free. I can do the linkage, all that. And I didn't have to get my forklift or tie downs or a ladder or anything else. So, like I said, I'm going to bet about 99% I saw something like that because of its shape and stuff. I just feel like I've seen that like a MotoGP or different stuff, but I think it's stinking cool. Anyway, 40 bucks for four of these. I spent about uh, 20 or 30 bucks. I think it was $26 in metal. And then, like I said, welded it up. And, you know, have you ever made something? And then after the fact, you're like, what the hell? There's a way easier way to do it. Well, that's kind of the case here because I don't think I needed this through shaft. And I'm kind of excited about this because I think I can go right onto the pegs. I'm, I'm a little unsure about the weight. I don't know that, you know, size of that bolt. I'm a little unsure, but there's a possibility that if I could go right there, um, and maybe even put just a real lightweight support jack underneath, not something to take the full weight of the header or the engine or anything else. But then I could even pop the swing arm bolt and service and swap out a swing arm or whatever. I don't know. It's freaking cool. But I've got too many other motorcycles around here, especially thinking about the, uh, the Ducatis I'm going to restore at some point, thinking that it's always a good investment, I think, to make tools. I know my buddy Clay Jensen would love this. He, uh, he's a guy that taught me a lot of things and we do a lot of stuff. You might be thinking it's Tuesday night and the track day is Sunday and you're thinking I'm crazy. Anybody that knows me knows that that's kind of the way it goes. Seems like my stuff was always last, but super stoked. We're going to ride this thing Sunday. We've got Continental tires already mounted up. Uh, going to be doing some more videos on that. Check this out. We're going to uh balance them show you how to balance them i already recorded with my boy kenny we recorded videos on how to use tire machine we're gonna have some uh, other videos on how to do it manually or by yourself matter of fact i'm gonna mount up on my other set of wheels we got some continental slicks i'm gonna mount those up uh by hand and show you that it can be done uh what else man is this cool man i got a mess to clean up in here now it looks terrible but uh oh this was kind of cool now that we're just all hanging out. Uh, I, I think this is funny. They still have the same welding helmet from college. Look at that. Isn't that funny? Cool stuff. Anyway, I ain't gonna lie. I'm exhausted. I'm going to uh, call it a night. And uh, once again, Dan Kyle, Kyle Racing. Check them out. I'll put some links in this once I post it so you can uh, figure out where to find them. And then Continental Tires. Uh, you folks are going to make my weekend something I haven't done before. Never rode on slicks. Not sure if I'll even get to the slicks this weekend because I haven't rode in a couple years. So I'm definitely starting out on these. I sold so many of these to customers and they just loved them. Guys doing track days and, uh, just street riders. Uh, but that was when they first came out. So, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to get on and, uh, test them out myself. Talk to Dan a lot about that today. And actually, uh, Eric over there at Monkey uh, Wrench Racing in Florida, we still need to talk about tire pressures for Continental and what's recommended there, hot and cold and all that. But uh, listen, I'm, j I'm I'm rambling here. But the the big point of this is I I don't think of all my experience riding, e even back in the day, uh, getting a number one plate. I just climbed on these dang things and pinned the throttle. I'm really super stoked to be on like such quality equipment and products. And then with the backing behind those people like Dan and Eric and uh, Brad at Continental, all those folks that just, uh, you know, are serving us and getting us that information to enjoy this at the highest level and perform uh, at our best. So super stoked, super stoked. Anyway, I think you should all stay tuned. We've got another... Um, I just keep thinking of new things that are coming up. We got a super cool, exciting announcement with uh, Speed Vision Media. You're going to start hearing a lot about them. We're going to do doing content together. And this dude is like the real editor. So he made cool content. Met him at the uh, 11 Moto, uh, 1110 uh, Do It Yourself Garage here in Phoenix. And just all kinds of cool stuff happening. But uh, I'm going to get at it. I'm going to jump in the shower, call it a night, and uh, 
hopefully I'm going to see some of you this weekend. Anybody going to uh, AMP? I know there's that Mark dude that invited me, but anybody else? Um, I could use a tow around the track. Never been there. And uh, it'll be interesting. So, All right, my friends. Make sure and like, share, subscribe. Join the channel on YouTube. Make it a great day or evening wherever you're at. And keep wrenching.